What's going on, people? 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 Making videos about computers. All up on the internet. Man, I had too much Mountain Dew today. I'm all jacked up on Mountain Dew. What's going on? All jacked up. What's it's Timmy Joe making videos, and today in the program, I woke up after having a decent sleep, after a lot of crazy work trying to get AMD launch day coverage done in two days because I got parts Friday. Uh, but a new part showed up today. It's the first AIB partner model, a Timmy Joe exclusive from Vision Tech. Vision, if I hadn't heard of that one in a while, eh? Vision Tech made this AIB partner model, this brand new cooler for the 5700 and uh, yeah Timmy Joe's got the exclusive they were like hey Timmy Joe we know you do the best launch day coverage you never uh, accidentally post videos you shouldn't be we should definitely give you that card for launch day and I'm totally lying I made this <laughs> I made this it's my 5700 see it took the cooler off of it because when I see a blower model I think how can I fix that and I'm not the only one who thought so Steve from Hardware Unboxed Stole my tweet, stole my idea. Like, I went to bed and I had posted some pics of this, like the beginnings of it anyways, and I woke up and everyone's like, hey, Timmy Joe already thought of that. I look in Steve's tweets, he's like, stole my exact tweet, the same thing. I, I'm like, dude, what's, oh, you just actually had the exact same idea. So he's gonna let me do the video. <laughs> But he did exactly what I did. He took the cooler from an R9 series card. This is a 390. His was a 290. And he put it on there and it works. And this is the first time in a while you can do something cool like this because the spacing for Vega, because the die was so gigantic with the HBM and the, the die was big as well, always made it so that the offset was like huge. It was like this whole new offset that uh, AMD had to make. So these other weird ways of cooling uh, really wouldn't work. I think the Morpheus would work because it's a big giant cooler and it was made right, like it was made kind of for it. But uh, unfortunately, I could never cool a Vega that way. That's why I always like uh, the last time I cooled a Vega. Weirdly, I put a um, you know EK water block on it, and I chilled some water and really got some performance out of that. So when I see stuff like this, I'm like, how can I fix it? Thanks to Steve for letting me do the video. I know you're the uh, you know the guru that normally does the cool stuff. Well, I, I get to make my card today. That's my Timmy Joe edition Radeon 5700. So before I get into all the details on what's going on with this thing and how much better a partner card, or maybe not, uh, will be. Let's talk about today's video sponsor, Ivacy VPN. Ivacy VPN is a really cool VPN. I mean, all the hip guys are doing it. So if you don't have a VPN yet, I'm like, what? You don't have a VPN, but how are you staying safe on public Wi-Fi? How are you staying safe when you download on your home network all the things you shouldn't be downloading? How are you even watching programming from different countries on streaming services? Well, get an Ivacy VPN and you'll be able to do it. it. Gives you fast, secure connections to you know making sure that all your data is safe. They don't log anything, and uh, you know they send your packets elsewhere so that they can't be intercepted by those. You know they change your IP, all that good stuff. And the best part is they're giving Timmy Joe people 20% off of a one a two or a five year plan at the links in the description. So go check them out. They're very inexpensive to begin with, but with that 20% off, it's like a no brainer to go grab a VPN from these guys. It's awesome. So back to the uh, thing at hand. So I see the blower model, which is not as bad as I was making it out in the last video. I just have a hate on for blower models, unfortunately. I understand why they went with the blower model. It's a tried and true tested design. And it actually works on this card. It's not as loud as I was I said vacuum cleaner in the last video. That's not really fair. It's not bad, especially if you had your system pointing, you know, towards the back of your monitor. Especially the 5700. It gets audible in gaming, but I mean, like, it stays around 2000 RPM, if that. It stays just audible and it will keep the GPU even a little bit overclocked at around 80 degrees. It's not bad at all. But if you want a little bit more or you want to save some sound, uh, is it better to do this or wait for a partner model? Well, I'm going to say 100% yes. And that's more because this model is locked down. For sure, AMD has software locked this down. It's not that the silicon or the power delivery can't handle 
more frequency or more power through it. In fact, I believe that the silicon between the 5700 and the 5700 XT is very, very similar, and the, the the whole power delivery and everything very, very similar. They're just changing the way you know the BIOS accesses stuff. So that means that we should see the ability to get the uh, you know 5700 up to the 5700 XT's level. And all that stuff's locked down right now because they don't want you thinking you can go and save the 50 bucks and buy one of these and then mod it. But by the time partner models come out and factory overclocked versions come out and stuff like that, we'll probably see a lot faster 5700s as we'll see from my testing. So I went and checked out all the dead cards I had and I had a few 390s and 290s and this Vision Tech cooler fit perfectly like a glove. All I had to do was find some thermal pads that will fit and make it so that the uh, you know VRM and the RAM was touching the heat sink on the other side of this. But as far as the setup, uh, AMD went with a fairly close setup to the R9 series, which makes it easier for the partners to go ahead and design their coolers because they've already designed ones like them in the past. And uh, you know what? You don't need a crazy... This, this is a pretty crappy cooler, if I'm honest, from Vision Tech. The fans are really thin on it. It only has three heat pipes, although they are very big. And, uh, you know, I've seen better coolers. And by today's standards, this is a pretty small little dinky cooler. Uh, and we will see, you know, better ones that will cool these and give the uh, ability for them to overclock way past the, you know, 1750 megahertz that this thing will boost at. It's very limited by software, you can tell. I'll talk about it near the end of the video. So. I got that all fitting. I put racing stripes on it. I had to cut the shroud. The shroud would actually go the other way. I made it work. Uh, I put the back plate on it even, which is, you know, sort of secured properly. We can see that the mounting hole or like the, the screw holes for attaching the heatsink to the GPU are not in the same place as they would have been on the original card here, but in it works anyways. In fact, yeah, no, I, I don't know. I don't know, it just would have been more over probably in the other one, but it works. Nonetheless, and then I took some car pin striping and some AMD stickers from some Wraith coolers and I made my own partner model and I think it looks awesome. I'm going to leave it like this for God's sakes. So what are some other methods I tried? Well, I could have went the Accelero route. I've done this with a GTX 1070 before when the 1070 Ti came out and I had just bought a 1070. I was kind of mad. So I took my blower model apart and I bought an Accelero or no, I had an Accelero sent to me from Arctic and uh, instead of using their shroud, Instead of using their shroud, I put some um, Noctua fans on it, and I put a shunt resistor mod on a 1070, and I made it go crazy, and it was fun. But this time around, I wanted it to look proper, because when this thing's on a, a, you know, a card, it looks weird. It looks like you've done something. This looks like a real card, even if it is from a few years ago. The, the shroud and cooler, God, I'm, it's going to break by the time I'm done this. I'm just going to leave it right there. Anyways, I did, though, try the NZXT Kraken Bracket, which doesn't work for this application. So the way this thing works is it allows you to put any um, liquid cooler that's an Asa Tech design like this onto a graphics card. The problem with it, though, is that although you do put one of these fans in here and you blow some air at the card, uh, there's a big section that's blocked off by this and some of the RAM and some of the, you know, uh, inductors and stuff like that just don't get cooled properly. I've had this problem with this thing before where the card is throttling even though it shouldn't be because the GPU die was at like 50 degrees Celsius max at load, with, even with this small cooler. Because the die on this thing is actually really small and it's not going to take a lot to cool it. Like I say, this isn't a very good cooler and it does a fairly good job. So I did hook this up and I was expecting to blow overclocks out of the water and it wouldn't even pass the fire strike stress test because something was throttling. I checked all the sensors in GPU-Z or in hardware monitor 64 and I could never, I couldn't find what was the problem, but with this thing on there and only this little bit of fan, you know, and, and this blocking the other side of the RAM, something was throttling. I just got rid of this idea, I scrapped it, I couldn't get this to work properly, even if the GPU temperature was at 50 degrees. So that leaves us with this thing. Is it actually worth it? Well, I don't expect you're going to go out and buy these cards and then go and find a broken R9390 and put the cooler on it, no. But as far as I'm concerned, because this cost me nothing to do, I'm going to keep it like this. It actually works out pretty good. So let's head over here, we'll do some testing, we'll do some explaining. And then when we come back uh, to the table, I'll have a conclusion 
on where I think the future of the 5700 and the Navi series is going. Come on over here. Let's go. Let's test it. All right, we have the stock fan, stock blower on the 5700 here, and we're going to get some baselines to see just how the temperature performs and how much we can improve upon it with my new cooling solution. So I'm going to run the Firestrike stress test. That runs Firestrike 20 times through, or at least the first part of it, and it judges stability based on frame times and stuff like that. It's really good for getting a baseline on what temperatures are. We see here that uh, it stays between 1650 and 1700 megahertz. This is just the early part of the test but uh, get a good judge of what the frequencies are going to be. It never really hits that 1725 boost clock at stock. As far as I'm concerned, that's silly. But the 1625 gain clock, it stays well above that. So here we're in the last half of the test here and we see we're at 75 degrees, but the uh, frequency has stayed the same. And then we jump ahead to near the end and we're at 80 degrees, but the frequency is still staying pretty solid. So let's go ahead and hear the card. Oh yeah, see she's finished. And that's as loud as the system really gets. It's not as bad as you'd think it would be. All right, so we passed with 99.8%, which is great, obviously. And if we check out the frequency curve, it's relatively flat for, uh, you know, staying between 1650 to 1700 megahertz, which is great. And then the fan curve is very flat as well. It stays uh, under 2000 RPM, you know, staying just barely audible. So it's designed fairly well. So then I slapped on my new cooling solution and I actually adjusted the fan curve so that it was less audible than the blower, uh, you know, when it go gets full ramp going. But uh, I had to up the RPM on the fans because they don't aren't as loud. They can work a little bit harder for this solution. So we start out here, same sort of frequency, same sort of temperature. This is midway through the test. We're actually a little bit lower and the same frequencies. This is all at stock. And then uh, we can go ahead and jump to the end right now. Yeah, there we go. And 7677 is where this thing stays so we actually get a better uh temperature with a little bit less noise let's check it out so it's about as loud and then that's with uh, a lot more rpms and we see here we're only at 71 degrees so we finish up the test 99.7 so we can tell there's no throttling or anything at least at stock and then you check out the gpu core clock it actually went above 1700 megahertz a few times which it did not with the old cooling solution and then gpu temperatures see never hits above 80 so we're actually doing better which is pretty awesome so here i'm just running regular fire strike and i have the uh fans actually maxed out on this little thing and it's actually maxed out to an msi afterburner at 1850 megahertz which uh I, th I think is just a silly limit for that to be on there someone will eventually figure out a way to change that but that's a hundred percent fan speed hundred percent fan speed with the case open too it'd be even better because it's not a blower and I'm able to max the frequency out. Now, it's only getting to 1764 megahertz, 1780, it's, it's getting up there near 1800 megahertz, never actually breaks 1800 megahertz ever, but we'll get the best fire strike score yet, I bet. And we did. There's a stock score versus the overclock score. Now, I could do the same thing with the blower model, but it was extremely loud and it never quite did as good as this one did. So, there actually is a point to doing this mod, although there is zero overclocking headroom in these cards. That's why I'm really looking forward to some factory overclocked models from some partner, uh, you know, partners. So, let's go ahead and jump back into the studio for a conclusion. <gasps> All right. So, yes. It's so locked down by AMD. AMD is single-handedly ruining overclocking for all of us. Now, I've watched lots of videos on the 5700 XT. I'd love to get my hands on one of those. It's so close that they, I, I believe that card, as is, has the silicon that could beat the Radeon 7. I do. And they've limited it, or they didn't make the, the, the they didn't put enough stream processors in it in, on purpose because they didn't want to cannibalize a card that they already had in development for a really long time or, or, or something. So they're going to let the Radeon 7 play out for a little bit longer. I, I don't think you're going to see, like, they're going to start getting real cheap all of a sudden, and you're not going to see them. And I don't, it's a shame, because they have really fast memory on them. They have buttloads of memory on them. They were a cool concept, but obviously they weren't a very cool card because they need to sound like a vacuum cleaner even though they don't have a blower model on them and i have one and i love it 
But the fact that I've seen a lot of testing and the 5700 XT is getting very close to the results you can get with a rating on 7 leads me to believe that AMD was just keeping these things where they are because that card had already been in development and maybe Navi actually ended up going faster than they thought it would. So they did all this launching and, you know, yay for us. They have video cards for us, finally. But by the end of the year, I bet, or maybe early next year, we will see a 5800 or 5800 XT that will be 2080 super performance. Maybe not 2080 Ti performance, maybe not, you know, uh, you know, the best card out there, but I believe the silicon and the fact that this thing really isn't sucking as much power as the two power leads on it really make you think. And the fact that, uh, you know, you can keep them cool lead me to believe that they can add more stream processors on these things and definitely get some more performance. And as far as the 5700 goes, especially this stock model from AMD, it is limited by the BIOS. And it will be only a matter of time before Buildzoid or whoever figures out how to mod a BIOS and put it on here. I tried. I thought maybe I could put the 5700 XT BIOS on this. ATI WinFlash will not even load the pro like won't even load with this card in there. It just says unexpected ROM or something like that. So eventually someone will crack this thing and unleash its power because as we saw, I can set the max limit allowed 1850 megahertz in MSI Afterburner and it will run. It'll run. It's, it's it, you know, only limited because AMD says so. If that power slider would go a little further and the voltage was unlocked in MSI Afterburner, I bet I could get this thing to over 1800 megahertz. And the proof's in the pudding, the, the XT. Apparently you can overclock it to, to two gigahertz. Why this thing's limited by that, you know, that 200 megahertz is only because it has potential to cannibalize, you know, the next one up. So I'm that was Timmy Joe on Instagram and Twitter. Hit the subscribe button if you enjoy racing stripes and AMD, you know, stickers on cards that it just doesn't, you know, <laughs> It doesn't make sense, you know, that I ruin my stuff like this. There's a lot of people out there that probably cringe, but I think it's fun to tinker. And in the end, I'm going to keep this cooler on here. Why the hell not? It's quieter. It's about five degrees, uh, you know, with the same uh, noise coming out of this uh, at stock. I can overclock this and, you know, and maybe you hear it a little bit, but the noise stays more in the case because it's not a blower model and the, uh, you know, it's about five degrees cooler and I can uh, get a little bit better overclock out of it. So all in all, it's a little quieter, it's a little cooler and you get the max overclock with this thing. Why wouldn't I leave it all together like this? Because it looks like a real video card. It just kind of looks like an R9 390, which I'll leave that up to you whether or not that's gross or not. So I'm at watching me, Joe, Instagram and Twitter. Thanks for watching me ramble about changing coolers on cards. And it's unfortunate, but if you're looking to buy the 5700, it is not going to be a tinkerer's, uh, you know, paradise until someone figures out the, how to unlock the BIOS. You know what? Someone always does. So it'll happen eventually to where I bet you can get this thing to the performance of the XT, even though some of the pro stream processors and stuff are shut off. So, you know, there's a, there's a strong feature for these cards. That's for sure. So I will see you guys in another video. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks very much. I don't know what else to say. I made my own damn card. I'm going to plug it into a computer and I'm going to play some damn video games. So stop bugging me. See you later.